Hi guys, welcome to this live session on how to prevent cyber attacks by IntelliPad. Before we begin the session, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get further notifications. So as the tech grows, there has been a massive spike in cyber attacks. And that's the reason all the companies want to increase their security. And in this session, we'll talk about how to prevent these cyber attacks. Here is the agenda for this session. We will begin by checking what really is a cyber attack its definitions and a short introduction. Then we will check out what are the types of attacks hackers use. Third, we will see what drives hackers to perform these cyber crimes. And last but the most interesting part, how exactly you save your computer. So to begin with, what are cyber attacks? Basically, a cyber attack is done by cyber criminal. They can use one or more computers to hack computer of any individual or hack all computers of a company. Table your computer steal data from it or they can hack only one computer in company and use it to hack into other computers. A cyber attack can be executed from anywhere in the world using various attack strategies. Now let's look into those strategies we were just talking about. Let me show you the list first and then we will learn about them individually. So the types of attacks that hackers use are denial of service, malware attack, man in the middle, phishing attack, password attack, SQL injection, and social engineering. So what is denial of service? This is one of the most common techniques used to hack into web servers. To put it simply, DDoS attack is an attempt to flood the server and overwhelm the target. Because of this, the service will temporarily not available or disrupted. The actual traffic will not be able to use the service because of this. In other words, the DDoS attack will send multiple requests to the attacked web resource website's capacity to handle multiple requests and prevent the website from functioning correctly. Here is an illustration of DDoS attack. Hacker uses botnet for these. Botnet are control units that keep and flood it. First, the attacker uses a control server to control all the botnets. Usually, botnets are thousands in numbers. These botnets then will keep sending messages to the target server at a certain point, the server responding. And that's when hacker has a chance to get into your computer. Now let's see what's a malware. Malware is a malicious software designed to exploit an electronic device, service or network. Cyber criminals typically use it to extract data that they can leverage over victims for financial gain. But there are many types of malwares. Let me tell you about them. First, we have viruses. A computer virus is like a flu virus it, and it is designed to spread from host to host and has the ability to replicate itself. In more technical terms, a computer virus is a type of malicious code or program written to alter the way a computer operates and is to your device without your knowledge. Free software which contains some ads may be annoying but it is not illegal. However, if a third party program adds malicious ad software onto your device without your consent then it's illegal. And finally, spyware is a type of malware that is installed on a computer without your norms. Now let's say you are working in your company and your manager asks you to send your password. You send him through your email, but what if there's a hacker that is monitoring your conversation? When you send your email, he interrupts it, makes a copy of it and let the mail go in the direction of your manager. Now this is man of the middle attack. Phishing. Let me show you an example. You all must have come across mails like this. Most of the people are not aware that these mails are sent by hackers. They think it's from their bank and they actually won the prize. When they click on the link, they are asked for their card number and OTP and then the whole amount from their bank are debited. That's why banks always say that they will never send any email or message regarding any money. If you receive any mail like this, immediately report it to your bank and to verify it. Next we have password attacks. Password attacks are the most common form of corporate and personal data attacks. Password attack is simply when a hacker tries to steal your password. Now in password attacks we have different types. The first type is brute force attack. A brute force attack uses trial and error method to guess login info, encryption keys or find a hidden web page. These attacks are done by brute force meaning they use excessive forceful attempts to try and force their way into the private accounts. Next we have dictionary attack. It's a password guessing technique in which the attacker attempts to de determine a user's password by successfully trying words from a dictionary. That dictionary is compiled with list of likely passwords that we put. Next we have keyloggers. 
Key loggers are built from the act of keystroke logging, creating records of everything you type on a computer or mobile keyboard. These are used to quietly monitor your computer activity while you use your device as normal. And finally, we have credential stuffing. It's a method in which attackers use lists of compromised user credentials to breach into a system. The attack uses bots. SQL injection is a web security vulnerability in which the attacker interferes with the queries that an application makes to its database. The hacker can retrieve sensitive data from the company. Here is an example for it. Let's say there's a website that contains a lot of username and passwords. Now this data is stored in database of websites that works on SQL queries, right? Now the hacker types a SQL query in the format that is shown. The hacker got into the website using some other's username password and then he can gain access to the website and then he can hack it and get all the data from the website. Now we move on to our last type of attack that's social engineering. Social engineering is the most common attack. Social engineering uses psychological manipulation to trick people into giving away sensitive information such as their card numbers, their OTPs. Then the hackers use that information to breach personal or organizational devices. From day to day, cyber criminals have learned that a carefully worded email, voicemail or text message can convince people to transfer money, provide confidential information or download a file that installs malware on the company network. Now let's go a bit further and let's see what would motivate people to committing such cyber crimes. The first and foremost would be financial loss to the target. Suppose I do a DDoS attack and the company is no longer working. They will suffer a huge financial loss. The second, demanding ransom. Hackers can encrypt your data and then demand money in order to decrypt it. Third, damaging reputation of the target. Impulsinating the user on social media platforms, making false statements, thus damaging the reputation of the person. Information theft and manipulating data. Suppose I get data that has a lot of value in dark market. I can sell it and earn from it. Creating chaos by disrupting critical infrastructure. For example, a company's infrastructure crashes and the hacker crashes it. The services are no longer to be offered by company. People start panicking about an attack by cyber criminals and they might never do any services in that company. Achieving state's military objectives. Now that's an interesting one. One country is spying on another country to gain information about their military intelligence and activities so that they can have upper hand on that country. Propagating religious or political beliefs. Now hackers promote whatever culture they want to promote or whatever party they want to promote. Getting more and more followers and thus achieving their motives. And finally, disrupting business continuity. If a person don't want any organization to work, he can hack into it to stop the business. Now these are all the motives behind the cyber attack. And now we reach the most important part of the topic, how to secure your computer. Again I am listing them out, then we will discuss one by one. We have two-way authentication, secure passwords, regular updates, antivirus, enable firewall and say no to phishing. Now in two-factor authentication, it's an extra layer of security used to make sure that user that's trying to gain access to an online account is authentic. For example, you all must have come across this example, Google's two-step verification service. It involves the usual password, something that the user knows or you know and a code that is sent to your device. So that is called as two-factor authentication or two-way authentication. Next we have secure passwords. And Hackers are really hungry for passwords as they have lot of value in the dark market. That's the main reason companies ask you to create a strong password so that no one can hack into it. Here are the tips to make your password secure. Do not use personal information. It's strongly recommended that you don't include any words related to your name or names of your family members or pets in your passwords. Do not use real words. Password cracking tools are very effective at helping hackers guess your password. Use mixed characters by combining uppercase letters with lowercase letters, numbers and special characters. Change passwords on a regular basis. Online financial accounts should be changed every month or two. While you may change your passwords every quarter, 
and that's the most important part don't write them down resist the temptation to hide passwords under your keyboard or post them on your monitor stories about hackers getting passwords by dumpster diving and shoulder surfing are absolutely real regular update always update your computer as soon as update comes an update comes when there is a security issue and has been resolved software updates are important because they often include critical patches to security holes in addition to security fixes software updates can also include new or enhanced features or better compatibility with different devices or applications and that's not the only part they can also improve the stability of your software and remove outdated features next we have antivirus well that's very self explanatory always use antivirus on your computer it helps to detect any virus in the file that you download or get externally always keep your firewalls enable a firewall is a network security device it helps in filtering or blocking incoming and outgoing network traffic based on the organization's policies most of us has habit of not checking whether the firewall in our computer is enabled or disabled one of the worst thing that could happen to your computer is if someone attempts to take control remotely you don't want a remote intruder to get into your digital kingdom right so always enable firewall in your computer now phishing is the most common way to get credential from any user and that's the trend that's going on right now it's very important to have awareness about this attack to protect yourself and your organization here are the tips to protect your pc from getting hacked be cautious about all communications you receive if it appears to be phishing communication do not respond just delete it do not click on any links listed in the email message or do not open any attachments contained in a suspicious email do not enter personal information in a pop up screen legitimate companies agencies and organizations do not ask for personal information via pop up screens install a phishing filter that's very important install a phishing filter on your email applications and also on your web browsers these filters will not keep out all phishing messages but they will reduce the number of phishing attempts that's it for this session guys just a quick info guys if you want to make a career in cyber security then intellipat has a post graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by enict academy mnit jaipur this course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by mnit professors and industry experts so with this we have come to the end of our session if you have any questions regarding this put them in the comment section below and stay tuned for more from intellipat